Hi students. Today's chapter is excretory system. That is excretory system. So you all are very well familiar from this term excretory system, or you can also say excretion. What is excretion? Actually, excretion is the elimination of waste products, especially nitrogen containing produced during metabolism from the body of an organism. So, waste products are unwanted and toxic byproducts which are removed to maintain homeostasis and protect the body from their toxicity. You can take the example of jaundice in case of bile pigments or uremia in case of urea. So, defecation is elimination of undigested food residue. From elementary canal, while secretion is a discharge of especially synthesized product, for example, hormone by endocrine gland, saliva from salivary gland. So, excretion or excretory system regulate the chemical composition of the body fluids by removing metabolic waste and retaining the proper amounts of water, salts, and nutrients. So, components of this system in vertebrates include the kidneys liver lungs and skin so kidneys liver lungs and skin all are the excretory structure of excretory system so first of all we take kidneys so what are kidneys you can see here bean shaped pair of kidney these are kidney these are pair which is a bean shaped so first of all kidneys are two bean shaped organs one on each side of the backbone second weight of each of them is approximately 150 g each actually weight of each kidney is about 125 to 170 g approximately and its size is about 5 to 6 cm breadth and 4 cm thickness and its length is about approximately 10 cm next the location of kidneys retroperitoneal in the abdominal cavity what is retroperitoneal retroperitoneal means behind the peritoneum retroperitoneal means behind the peritoneum so that is retroperitoneal it means kidneys are covered by peritoneum only on ventral or frontal side next right kidney is slightly lower than the left one that is that is right kidney is slightly lower than the left one why it is so because liver is present on the right side which makes right kidney slightly lower than the left one next above each kidney is an adrenal gland you can see in the picture above each kidney is a adrenal gland so it is also said suprarenal gland the another name of adrenal gland is suprarenal gland because it is situated above the kidneys. Now, here are the different segments of kidneys. Each kidney has two surfaces, anterior surface and posterior surface. That is back side. This is front side. Next, it has two poles or kidney has two poles. Superior and inferior these are superior poles or above poles these are lower poles or inferior poles two borders one convex and another concave you can see here this is concave side of kidney and this is convex side of kidney so two borders one convex and another one concave concave is this one this is medial one at the medium of the kidney now there is a notch in the center of the medial border known as hilum this is hilum actually each kidney has a fissure or hilum or you can also say hilum hilus renalis on the concave medial side this is concave medial side 
दिस इज कॉन्केव साइड ऑफ किडनी एंड दिस इज मिडल साइड तो हाइलम इज सिचुएटेड एट द कॉन्केव मिडल साइड ऑफ द किडनी एंड इट इज फॉर द पैसेज ऑफ ब्लड वेसल्स हाइलम इज सिचुएटेड हियर फॉर द पैसेज ऑफ ब्लड वेसल्स और ब्लड लेडिन विथ वेस्ट प्रोडक्ट्स ब्रॉड बाय रीनल आर्टरी एंड फिल्टर ब्लड टेकन बाय रीनल वेन सो हाइलम इज द पैसेज फॉर ब्लड वेसल्स लिम्फ वेसल्स नर्व एंड यूरेटर एंड हाइलम इज कनेक्टेड इंटरनली टू अ कैविटी नेम रीनल साइनस हेयर इज द रीनल साइनस सो हाइलम इज कनेक्टेड इंटरनली टू अ कैविटी नेम रीनल साइनस नेक्स्ट अपर पार्ट्स ऑफ किडनीज आर पार्शली प्रोटेक्टेड बाय द एलेवेंथ एंड ट्वेल्थ रिब्स सो अपर पार्ट्स ऑफ किडनीज आर प्रोटेक्टेड बाय एलेवेंथ एंड ट्वेल्थ रिब्स ऑफ स्पाइनल कॉर्ड नेक्स्ट कवरिंग ऑफ ईच किडनी इज मेड अप ऑफ पैरा रीनल एंड पेरे रीनल फैट एक्चुअली ईच होल किडनी एंड एड्रीनल ग्लैंड आर सराउंडेड बाय टू लेट्स ऑफ फैट दैट इज पेरे रीनल एंड पैरा रीनल फैट वॉट इज पैरा रीनल एंड पैरीनल फैट एक्चुअली पैरा रीनल फैट इज लोकेटेड एक्सटर्नल टू द रीनल फेसिया एंड नाउ वॉट इज रीनल फेसिया रीनल फेसिया इज अ लेयर ऑफ कनेक्टिव टिश्यू एंड कैप्सुलेटिंग द किडनीज सो पैरा रीनल फैट इज लोकेटेड एक्सटर्नल टू द रीनल फेसिया एंड पैरी रीनल फैट इज लोकेटेड विद इन द रीनल फेसिया इट इज ऑल्सो लोकेटेड विद इन द रीनल साइनस नेक्स्ट कम्स ब्लड सप्लाई ऑफ द kidney you can see in the picture this renal parenchyma this collecting system renal artery renal vein and ureter the meaning of renal is actually kidney so first of all kidneys receive unfiltered blood directly from the heart through the abdominal aorta so located at the rear of the abdominal cavity in the retroperitoneum the kidneys receive blood from the paired renal arteries these are renal arteries these are paired and drain into paired renal vein so abdominal aorta branches to the left and right renal arteries next filtered blood then returns by the left and right renal veins to the inferior vena cava and then to the heart so you can see in the picture that renal parenchyma functioning part of the kidney that filters blood and makes urine collecting system urine produced by the parenchyma is transferred to the tunnel like area which acts like plumbing to move urine out of the kidney and into the ureter here renal artery provides blood supply to the kidney direct from the heart a renal vein drains blood from the kidney and ureter this tube carrying urine produced in the kidney to the bladder so this is blood supply of the kidney and renal blood flow accounts for 20 to 25% of the cardiac actually from 100% of the blood only 20 to 25% of the cardiac output is purified in the kidney and the rest of the part of the blood goes to different part of the organs so some way it is funny that from 100% of the blood of the cardiac output only 20 to 25% of the blood is purified in the kidney now structure of kidney you can see here the structure of kidney first of all there are mainly two parts of kidneys actually the kidneys covered by thin sheet of renal capsule of white fibrous connective tissue with a few yellow elastic fibers and a few smooth muscles so internally the kidney has two parts renal cortex and renal medulla or outer cortex or inner medulla this is outer cortex and this is medulla so renal cortex is the outer part of the kidney and it has a reddish color it has a smooth texture and it's the location of the bowman's capsule and the glomeruli second renal medulla it is the inner part this is the renal medulla 
इट इज़ द इनर पार्ट ऑफ किडनी वट इज़ द मीनिंग ऑफ मेडुलर मेडुलर मीन्स इनर पोर्शन दिस एरिया इज स्ट्रेटेड रेड ब्राउन कलर दिस इज स्ट्रेटेड मस मसल्स लाइक एंड रेड ब्राउन इन कलर सो दीज आर पिरामिड्स रीनल पिरामिड्स सो इनर मेडुलर कंटेंट्स टेन टू फिफ्टीन पिरामिड्स सो द एपीरियंस ऑफ स्ट्रेशन और स्ट्रेटेड मसल्स इज ड्यू टू मैनी स्ट्रेट ट्यूब्यूल्स एंड ब्लड वेसल्स विद इन द रीनल पिरामिड्स दीज आर रीनल पिरामिड्स दीज लाइन्स लाइक स्ट्रक्चर आर द एपीरियंस ऑफ स्ट्रेश एंड इट इज़ ड्यू टू मैनी स्ट्रेट ट्यूब्यूल्स एंड ब्लड वेसल्स विद इन द रीनल पिरामिड्स नेक्स्ट पिरामिड्स टर्मिनेट मीडियली इन द रीनल पेपिला दिस इज रीनल पेपिला दिस इज Actually, in the kidney, the renal papilla is the location where the medullary pyramids empty urine into the minor calyx. This is renal papilla, and from here, and from here, the medullary pyramids empty urine into the minor calyx. This is minor calyx. Next comes. Papilla projects into calyces or calyx. Both are same. What are calyces? Actually, calyces is the papilla of each pyramid empties urine into a minor calyx, and minor calyx empty into major calyx, and major calyx empty into the renal pelvis, which becomes the ureter. So, the papilla of each pyramid empties urine into minor calyx, and from minor calyx it empty into the major calyx and from major calyx it em urine empty into the renal pelvis this is renal pelvis and which becomes the which becomes the ureter next comes microscopic structure or you can say microscopic structure of kidney the basic functional and structural unit of the kidney is the nephron there is approximately 1 to 1.3 million nephrons in each kidney which drain into the renal pelvis total length of nephron is 45 to 65 mm so a kidney has about 1 million uriniferous tubules or nephron which are embedded in a connective tissue so nephrons are the structural and functional units of kidney you can see in this picture the structure of nephron So each nephron has a diameter of twenty to sixty mu micron and a length of about three centimeter. Now different part of nephrons are as follows: first of all, Bowman's capsule; next, glomerulus; next, the proximal convoluted tubule or PCT. You can also see side by side in the picture. This is Bowman's capsule. This is glomerulus. And this is PCT or proximal convoluted tubule. Next, the loop of Henle. This is the loop of Henle, which is named after the name of a scientist. Loop of Henle. Next come the distal convoluted tubules. This is the distal convoluted tubule. And next, the collecting tubules. This is the collecting duct or collecting tubules leading to the pelvis of the kidney also known as a renal pelvis so this is about the parts of nephron so the first part of nephron is bowman's capsule this is bowman's capsule or you can also say it glomerular capsule it is a cup like sac you can see here it is a cup like sac at the beginning of the tubular component of a nephron in the mammalian kidney that performs the first step in the filtration of blood to form urine so so bowman's capsule is blind cup shaped end of uriniferous tubule which has a double wall of thin walled flattened cell supported over basement membrane the outer wall is parietal layer the outer wall is parietal layer while the inner wall is called visceral layer the space between the two is called 
capsular space the visceral layer is made up of specialized epithelial cells called podocytes these are podocytes these are the visceral layer of bowman's capsule a podocyte is connected to basement membrane by a foot like process called pedicels these are pedicels so a podocyte is connected to basement membrane by pedicels and the spaces in between the pedicels are called filtration slits or slit pores these are filtration slits or slit pores so in bowman's capsule there is a site of ultra filtration or you can say this is a first step in the filtration of blood to form urine next blood from the renal artery is forced into the glomerulus under high pressure next most of the liquid is forced out of the glomerulus into the bowman's capsule so most of the filtration is done in the bowman's capsule next comes glomerulus you can see here the picture of this is glomerulus first of all glomerulus is the main filter of nephron and it is located within the bowman's capsule this is bowman's capsule and this is glomerulus actually glomerulus obtains blood from an efferent arteriole and is drained out to form an efferent arterioles actually this is the bunch of veins arteries are called glomerulus next it resembles a twisted mass of tiny tubes through which the blood passes capillaries are supplied by efferent arteriole and the blood leaves from the tuft or bunch by efferent arterioles actually glomerulus obtains blood from an efferent arterioles and is drained out to form an efferent arterioles so the diameter of efferent arteriole is more than that of efferent arterioles the diameter of efferent arterioles is more than that of efferent arteriole as a result blood present in glomerulus is put to a great pressure the walls of bowman's capsule and glomerular capillaries are closely applied and extremely thin so that pressure of the blood causes the plasma to filter out a fluid into lumen of bowman's capsules so since this filtration is very fine and is caused by pressure it is known as ultra filtration so filtration takes place in glomerulus is called ultra filtration next bowman's capsule glomerulus together constitute the malpighian capsules or also you can also say malpighian capsules uh, malpighian body or renal capsules or renal corpuscles so bowman's capsule glomerulus and its connective tissue are together called malpighian capsules next come the proximal convoluted tubule or tct this is the coiled up tube near to the bowman's capsule actually bowman's capsule leads into a short and narrow neck the wall is continuous with outer wall of bowman's capsule and lumen with the lumen of the capsule so neck leads to proximal convoluted tubule epithelium is brush bordered it has numerous microvilles in it for this purpose actually proximal convoluted tubule is lined by cone shaped cells with brush border called microvilli and what microvilli do microvilli increase the surface area to absorb the water next this is the place where all that useful glucose is reabsorbed from the ultra filtrate and put back into the blood in diabetics the glucose is not reabsorbed and ultimately it comes in urine known as glycosuria 
so in proximal convoluted tubule active absorption occurs in case of glucose amino acid vitamins and sodium next comes loop of henle you can see in the picture this is loop of henle actually proximal convoluted tubule leads into a loop of henle or, or u shaped tubular part or hairpin loop that lies in the renal medulla so it, it has a descending and ascending limbs first of all it is a loop like structure consists of a descending this is descending limb and this is ascending limb and it lies in medulla what is mainly reabsorbed from hair in renal medulla the the interstitial fluid has a high concentration as a result water is lost from the filtrate through osmosis the filtrate comes to have high sodium chloride concentration so the ascending limb of loop of henle loses a lot of sodium chloride first through passive diffusion in the thin segment secondly through active transport in the thick segment so water is mainly reabsorbed from the loop of henle next osmosis takes place here water will pass from a region of high water concentration into a region of low water concentration through cell membranes which are semi permeable so the more water is reabsorbed in animals with longer loops the glomerular filtrate runs in the opposite direction in the two limbs of loop of henle in vasa recta the flow of blood is similarly in the opposite directions in the two limb this helps in immediate picking up of excess water coming out of descending limb so this is loop of henle next comes distal convoluted tubules or dct you can see here distal convoluted tubule so loop of henle passes into distal convoluted tubule present in renal cortex it is surrounded by peritubular capillaries so first of all macula densa you can see in the picture distal tubule with macula densa so what is macula densa here so let's see actually in the kidneys the macula densa is an area of closely packed specialized cells lining the wall of distal tubule at the point of return of the nephron to the vascular pole of its parent glomerulus the cells of macula densa are sensitive to concentration of sodium chloride in the distal convoluted tubule these are cuboidal cells and distal convoluted tubule and connecting tubule constitute the area of selective reabsorption and tubular secretion so macula densa is characterized by cuboidal epithelium this tubule comes very close to its own glomerulus and establishes a close proximity to the afferent and efferent arterioles afferent and efferent arterioles next at this site the cells of distal convoluted tubule get modified to become columnar and are closely crowded together so this part is called macula densa so so distal convoluted tubular secretion is the only mode of excretion in the marine fishes and digital amphibians the important components of tubular secretion in humans are urea uric acid hyperuric acid creatinine ammonia extra salts potassium hydrogen ion etc so this is about macula densa next comes the macula densa and the adjacent juxta glomerular part of the afferent arteriole wall are functionally associated forming juxta glomerula apparatus actually juxta glomerula apparatus is a microscopic structure in the kidney which regulates the function of each nephron the juxta glomerular apparatus is named for its proximity to the glomerulus it is found between the vascular pole of renal corpuscles and the returning distal convoluted tubule of the same nephron now collecting tubules first of all these are lined with cuboidal epithelium and distal convoluted tubule joined to form collecting tubules actually to understand collecting tubule first of all you have to understand connecting tubule what is connecting tubule 
कनेक्टिंग ट्यूबवेल इज अ शॉर्ट स्ट्रेट पार्ट ऑफ डिजिटल कॉन्वोलेटिक ट्यूबवेल और डी सी टी एंड डी सी टी इज लाइन बाई कॉलोम सेल्स विदाउट ब्रश वॉटर सो कनेक्टिंग ट्यूबवेल्स ओपन इन टू वाइडर कलेक्टिंग ट्यूबवेल कलेक्टिंग ट्यूबवेल इज लाइन विद स्पेशलाइज क्यूबॉडल एपिथीलियम द एपिथीलियम इज परमिबल टू वाटर नॉट टू सॉल्ट नेक्स्ट Collecting tubules run through the medulla and loops of Henle's surrounds the collecting ducts. When water and salts are removed from the liquid in the collecting ducts, it is turned into urine. So, bottom part of collecting tubule is permeable to urea. Next comes, although our kidneys make about one sixty liters of urine every twenty four hours, we only produce about half liter of the urine. next comes why we are seeing collecting tubules so because collecting tubules collects a liquid produced by lots of nephrons so here excess of urea passes back into nephric filter through ascending thin segment of loop of henle collecting tubules open into collecting ducts in the same joint to form larger ducts of bellini next comes types of nephrons nephrons are of two types first of all cortical nephron and next is juxta medullary nephrons you can see in the picture these are juxta medullary nephron and these are cortical nephron so two general classes are cortical and juxta medullary nephrons both of which are classified according to the location of their associated loop of henle so they are classified according to the location of their loop of henle so cortical nephron have their loop of henle in the superficial renal cortex you can see here you can see here that cortical nephron have their loop of henle in the superficial renal cortex while the loop of henle of juxta medullary nephron are located near the renal medulla you can see in cortical nephron the loop of henle is in renal cortex here it is whereas in juxta medullary nephron the loop of henle is in renal medulla so the majority of nephrons are cortical cortical nephrons have shorter loop of henle compared to juxta medullary nephron the loop of henle is shorter in cortical nephron so the longer loop of henle in juxta medullary nephron create a hyperosmolar gradient that allows for the creation of concentrated urine so this is all about cortical juxta medullary nephrons next comes juxta glomerulus apparatus you can see here juxta glomerular apparatus what is juxta glomerular apparatus it is a microscopic structure in the kidney which regulates the function of each nephron the juxta glomerular apparatus is named for its proximity to the glomerulus it is formed between the vascular pole of the renal corpuscles and the returning distal convoluted tubule of the same nephron this is juxta glomerular apparatus which is found between the vascular pole of the renal corpuscles and the returning distal convoluted tubule of the same nephron now juxta glomerular apparatus has three types of cells and these are juxta glomerular cells macular denser cells and messenger cells or less cells so these are the three cellular components of apparatus first of all macular denser cells you can see in the picture macular denser cells these are this is macular denser cell or you can see here this is macular denser cells which are columnar cells actually macular denser cells are columnar epithelium thickening of the distal tubule the macular denser senses sodium chloride concentration in the distal tubule of kidneys 
and it secretes a locally active vasopressor which acts on the adjacent afferent arteriole to decrease glomerular filtration rate next comes mesangial cells you can see in the picture mesangial cells extra glomerular mesangial cells here are the mesangial cells mesangial cells are structured cells in the glomerulus that under normal conditions serve as anchors for the glomerular capillaries they serve as anchor for these glomerular capillaries these cells within the glomerulus communicate with mesangial cells outside the glomerulus and it is the mesangial cells that form part of the juxta glomerular apparatus and the function of these mesangial cells are mysterious they contain actin and myosin and allowing them to contract when stimulated by renal sympathetic nerves which may provide a way for the sympathetic nervous system to modulate the actions of the juxta glomerular apparatus so this is all about juxta glomerular apparatus next comes uricotelism what is uricotelism when the main waste product is uric acid then this property is called uricotelism so uricotelism is the elimination of uric acid as the main nitrogenous waste material animals showing uricotelism are called uricotelic animals in this ammonia produced by protein catabolism is converted to uric acid in the liver of uricotelic animals actually uricotelism is common in birds land reptiles insects land snails and some land crustaceans uric acid is formed from ammonia mostly in liver and to some extent in the kidneys next synthesis of uric acid involves high expenditure of energy than the synthesis of urea so this process is highly energy dependent but it's much less toxic than both ammonia and urea and it is almost insoluble in water and can be eliminated from the body in nearly a solid state saving a lot of water so the advantage of this property is that with very limited access to water these animals can withstand the life so since kidneys can handle the nitrogenous waste only in solution reptiles and birds pass a dilute solution of uric acid into the cloaca where water is absorbed and solid uric acid is eliminated along with feces so uric acid is almost insoluble in water and can be eliminated from the body in nearly a solid state so this process saves a lot of water so these animals can withstand the life with a very limited excess of water